What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 13.3 beta 2 exactly one week after the release of beta 1 and just a few days after the release of iOS 13.2.2. So of course in this video we're going to be talking about what's new and what's changed here in this second beta as well as the overall performance, the battery life, the connectivity, all that fun stuff about the first beta and also if that's changed at all here in beta 2. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. You can see here the size of this update was about 200 94 megabytes and I noticed that it was under 300 megabytes on all devices but of course that size will vary depending on your device and also what firmware you are coming from as for the build number if we go into our settings general about you can see there 13.3 if we tap on that you can see the new build number here is 17c 5038a and if we scroll down a little bit further down there to the bottom you can see we have a new modem firmware update as well so it went from 1.03.04 in beta 1 to 1.03.09 here in iOS 13.3 beta 2. So if you were having any kind of cell connectivity issues or anything like that, this could be fixed in this second beta. Now, as for the features and changes in iOS 13.3 beta 2, there are no outward facing features, nothing like in your settings, nothing in your control center, nothing like that. You can't really expect that in the second beta of a point release anyways, but there are a good amount of very important and very much needed bug fixes in this update. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is RAM management. So as you guys know, iOS 13.2, really iOS 13.1.3 started the whole issue with RAM management, where basically you would go into an application, you go out of it, go into another one, and then when you try to come back into the application you went into first, it would basically reload, you would kind of lose where you were in that application. So if you're like reading an article, you would lose where you were at in that article because the Safari tab would reload. It was the same with YouTube. When you went back into YouTube, that video wasn't playing anymore. And it was the same for text messages. You'd be typing things and you'd go out to another application, come back in, and all the text you just typed was gone. So that was a really big issue, a really annoying issue in iOS 13. Luckily, iOS 13.2.2, the public release, did fix that fully. And iOS 13.3 beta 1, which was released a couple days before 13.2.2, kind of fixed the issue, it slightly fixed it, but not entirely. However, beta two here of iOS 13.3 did fully fix the issue, and now it feels exactly like iOS 13.2.2 feels, which is great, which is how it was pre iOS 13.1.3 slash 13.2. So if you were having the RAM management issues in the first beta of iOS 13.3, which most people should have, then you will definitely be wanting to update to 13.3 beta two, because it makes the whole experience of iOS so much better everything feels faster and more fluid and you're not going to find yourself constantly pulling your hair out because you lose progress in certain applications because ios just has a glitch where it can't keep things running properly in the background now some of the other changes in ios 13.3 beta 2 have to do with the mail application actually most of the fixes here in the second beta have to do with the mail application which has been having a ton of issues really ever since iOS 13 was released. So it's good to see Apple continuously fixing this, uh, but it's kind of you know aggravating that there are still so many issues with the mail application that lasted all the way till 13.3. But anyways, the first fix I wanted to talk about had to do with forwarding a message via haptic press. If you go in haptic touch or haptic press on an email, and basically when you would press forward right here, it would crash the mail application in iOS 13.3 beta one. However, in beta two, if you go ahead and tap on that, you can see it works properly. It does not crash the mail application. So that has been fixed here in beta two. Another mail related bug that's been fixed has to do with mail in the notification center. So if we go ahead and swipe down and we see my notification center right here. Basically, if you go ahead and press on this, where you got all your emails right here, if you went ahead and pressed on one of these notifications and then you went back into your notification center, all the other emails in that notification bubble would be gone. They would just completely disappear. But now in beta two, you can see all of them remain here, even after clicking on one of the notifications and going into that mail message. And another issue that's been fixed here in beta two is marking emails as read or unread now works 100% of the time. So you can see if I swipe over and mark them as read and unread very quickly before you would not be able to do it. Sometimes it would just not mark them read or unread and it would basically get stuck right there. But now you can see it works time and time again. There are no issues with that here in beta two. And then another issue I noticed in iOS 13.3 beta one was a pretty weird one and it had to do with dark mode. So basically if I went into my dark mode and light mode settings right here into the options, when I had it set to sunset to sunrise, it wouldn't even change. So for some reason it would not change. I don't know if it had trouble picking up the exact time of my device, but it didn't work 
in beta one. However, I did test it in beta two by going into dark mode and then letting it do its thing and automatically go back to light mode and it did work here in beta two. So if you were having that issue, I don't think I saw anybody else have that issue, but if you were, that has been fixed here in the second beta. And then I also like to pick out some comments on my previous videos to see some issues that basically you guys have been having. I also picked these out from Twitter and Instagram as well. But you can see here, somebody said, I'm having Bluetooth issues on iOS 13.2. AirPods are disconnected after some time, but they connect back within one or two seconds. So if you're having any kind of Bluetooth issues, those should be fixed in 13.3 beta two. I saw some people saying that about beta one as well. So people are having that with beta one. That should be fixed here in beta two. I still have not had that issue. I didn't have that issue since like iOS 13.1. So I've not had that issue in a while with Bluetooth because Apple is continuously fixing things to do with Bluetooth. But if you are having Bluetooth issues, of course, go ahead and keep updating until it does eventually get fixed. And then you can see here, someone also said a screenshot crop bug. I still have that one. Sometimes it crops it, sometimes it doesn't. Now this for me was fixed in iOS 13.3 beta one. And I actually believe it was fixed in 13.2.2 as well. Uh, so it should be fixed for you in the second beta of 13.3. I know a lot of people had that issue early on. It fixed for me in 13.3 beta one. I didn't mention it because I didn't know until using the software for a little while, but I did also notice that it was fixed in 13.2.2. So if you still have the issue where you basically take a screenshot and you go to crop it and it doesn't save it as cropped, it will just save like the full image instead of saving it as cropped. That should be fixed for you as you can see right here. And then also sometimes it happened when you were just in the photo and you pressed on edit and you went to crop it and it didn't save it as what you just cropped it as. But I do want to mention that if you're having issues with cropping inside of applications like Twitter, that's probably an issue to do with Twitter, not iOS itself. So definitely contact Twitter, let them know if you are having that issue. And then the final change in iOS 13.3 beta 2 is that Safari now supports NFC, USB and Lightning FIDO2 compliant security keys. So if you don't know what this is or you want to know more about that, I will have a link down in the description below, but that is basically now active and working on iOS 13.3 beta two. Now, as for the performance in iOS 13.3 beta one, it was pretty solid. I don't think it was as good as 13.2.2 because there were a lot of issues with the mail application and you know, obviously the RAM management issues were not fully fixed. So it was still very frustrating to use on a daily basis when you multitask a lot. So 13.3 beta one was solid, but beta two is definitely gonna be a lot better since it does fix the RAM management issues. So I can definitely see 13.3 beta two being a lot faster and more fluid and just a lot better and easier to use, especially on your daily device. And another good sign about iOS 13.3 is that in the first beta, I didn't have any crashes. I didn't have any lockups or anything like that. So that's definitely a good sign of things to come with iOS 13.3. Now, while we're on the subject of performance based issues, I did want to show you guys this issue that I had with iOS 13.2.2. So you can see here, my phone completely locked up. I was unable to do anything. I had to force restart it. And this is on 13.2.2. Two. So iOS 13.3 beta one, I did not have this issue with, and hopefully I don't have this with 13.3 beta two, but the latest public release, I had this major issue right here and you can see it just completely locks up. I show it's on the iPhone 11 pro max there on the latest release. So that was really annoying and really frustrating to see on a public release because that's kind of stuff that you expect on a beta. Uh, so that's really a good testament to iOS 13.3 as well. I have not had any issues like that. Now, as for battery life, battery life was also pretty solid on beta one, really no complaints. It was pretty much the exact same as 13.2, 13.2.2, things like that. So I can't really see a big difference in battery life at all. Maybe it's because I'm using the brand new iPhone 11, 11 pro and 11 pro max but I really don't notice any kind of battery changes at all with these recent software updates, but I wouldn't expect too big of a change at all going from point update to point update. And I think that's a good thing because Apple is staying pretty consistent when it comes to battery life. Now the people that have battery drain issues, I just suggest for you guys to watch my how to save battery life on iOS 13 video. I will have that link down in the description because it seems like a lot of people that have battery drain issues just have those issues no matter what device they're on. Now, should you update to iOS 13.3 beta two? And I say absolutely, especially if you're on iOS 13.3 beta one, you should 100% update to beta two. Now, if you're on iOS 13.2.2, you're gonna notice that things are pretty much exactly the same. However, of course, you do have additional options inside of iOS 13.3, like the keyboard. If we go into our settings, general keyboard, you can see you have that new option down there for the Memoji stickers, which you can disable in your keyboard, which is a really nice option to have. And as for performance and stability, like I mentioned earlier, you definitely don't have the crashes and the lockups like you did on 13.2.2. Now, I don't think that's a widespread issue. That could have just been me. It could have just been an anomaly with my iPhone 11 Pro Max. 
but I haven't had any of those issues on iOS 13.3. So if you're on iOS 13.2.2, I would at least look at iOS 13.3 beta 2 and consider updating to it, even on your daily driver, because I have not had any issues with the betas here in a while. And especially, you know, after it gets past the first beta, I can pretty much safely recommend updating on your daily driver because there's really no issues. So yeah, I would at least consider updating to iOS 13.3 beta, even if you're on 13.2.2. But of course, if you're not having any issues on 13.2.2 and you don't care about any of the new changes in 13.3, then there's no point in updating until the final release of 13.3 does get released. And as for when we'll get that final release, you can see there we do have an A in the build number, which means that we are you know, quickly approaching the final release. I would say that we'd probably get that closer to the end of November, maybe the final week of November. So you still do have a little bit of time. If you're on 13.2.2, you may as well just wait out 13.3 until the final version, unless of course you do like the features and you do want to see some kind of improvements in cell connectivity performance or anything like that. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for iOS 13.3 beta two. It should be out to public beta testers very soon. It may be out by the time you're watching this. I will have that updated down in the description below. But if you guys did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss the next iOS update. I like to keep you guys informed of every iOS update here on the channel. And I do make a video for every single release. So definitely subscribe so you stay up to date on the latest to do with iOS updates. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you soon.